Hello everyone, I am the Owl Curator, and welcome back to the third episode of the Viccan lore series. In last week's episode, we focused on the haunted Bruyant Mansion. In this week's episode, we're going to be focusing on Act 2, the Blood Matron. After the ordeals of Act 1, and being marked by Molag Bal, you will return to the Temple of Stendar and be met by a guard from the city of Windhelm. They will inform you that the steward of Windhelm has sent them to request help from the Vigilants due to a disturbing amount of disappearances of prisoners from their cells, but is shocked to learn that there are only two of you left. Accept the request and pry for further details, and the guard will tell you that the information surrounding these disappearances is classified and you will have to meet face to face with the steward if you wish to know more. The steward will shed light on the incident further upon your arrival at the Palace of the Kings, detailing that there have been trails of blood found within the underground dungeon. You take it upon yourself to go investigate. Venture into the bowels of the Hypogean prison and you will discover the same trails of blood, all of them leading towards a statue of a maiden. Return to the steward and he will inform you that there is no accounting or documents that reveal anything of this mysterious statue, suggesting that you return to the Temple of Stendar to perhaps find something there. Once you have returned and spoken to Gwyneth, she will direct you to the library where you will find a report from Windhelm from the 180th year of the Fourth Era, 20 years before the present day read the report and it will detail of how prisoners had vanished within the dungeon and that they discovered a vampire who had caused some casualties to the vigilants. Those who weren't dead were tended to by healers to ensure that they hadn't been infected with vampirism. After capturing the vampire, they interrogated him, asking about the hidden door and how to access it. The vampire did not make it through the interrogation, but not before imparting knowledge to the vigilants on how to open the statue with the blood of a vampire. An investigation team was assembled, which consisted of seven vigilants and 13 city guard, all of whom would embark on a journey through the door and into the mystery of what lay behind it. However, half a day later, screams echoed from within the tunnels behind the statue and the door sealed shut. Only a single one of them managed to survive, a vigilant named Jacob, he reported that the investigation team had been crushed under a collapsing tunnel and the report concluded that the vampire's entry spot had been blocked and so the investigation was terminated. Within this report, we also discover a vial of the vampire's blood mentioned from the report as well as a note from Jacob which warns further on the nature of the statue. A warning to anyone who reads this. If the maiden statue is opened, that means she's awake. She is the defiler of Arke, and a mistake of Stendar. Never approach her. Don't even look at her. Don't listen to her voice. Otherwise, she will drag you to the castle of blood mist for a night with the Lord of Domination and Enslavement. Return to Windhelm and inform the steward of your findings, where he will give you his blessing to continue with the investigation. Using the blood of the vampire, Enter into the hidden passage behind the statue. As soon as you enter, you will notice the skeletal remains of a vigilant named Joshua, who has a note detailing about how he attempted to escape, but the statue wouldn't open, cursing Stendar for what has happened. Slay the skeevers and feral vampires, traverse the twists and turns of the sewers and the hidden passages, and you will come face to face with Gwaji Groagnum, a vigilant. He will attack you on sight, Kill him, and you will receive a key to descend into the bloody well. Paulo, another vigilant, will speak to you, mistaking you for Guaji. Once he realises, however, that you are not him, he will begin to run away. Slay him, and you will be granted entrance into the slums of Old Windhelm. This place leads to the old city of Windhelm, a ruined civilization which lies within the caverns under the city. It is infested with vampires, some feral, some more brutish, and even vampiric liches. Slay them, and you will finally reach the vampire known as the Nightmare of Illinolta, a fitting name given its frightening size. Slay it, 
and you will be able to proceed into the asylum. Within the asylum, you will find a vigilant named Thingol, who warns you that it is dangerous for you to be there, and that a man named Jericho will return at any moment. Jericho turns out to be another vigilant who is in the company of two vampire brutes. Slay him as quick as possible, and then speak to Thingol once more. He will reveal that the investigation team was beaten by the Blood Matron, who imprisoned those who refused to imbibe her blood. Thingol tells us of how he shares her grief, of the pain and misery that she felt that night all the way back when she was still known as Le Mer Bjolfag, only to be profaned and violated by Molag Bal in the body of the Bard. You may grant Thingol his final wishes and deliver him Stendar's mercy. After the deed is done, you return the way you came through the asylum, and you will discover that a new passage has been opened up, leading to the palace of the temptress. Journey through the palace, and you will come into a dining room, at the end of which is a large door. Open it, and you will see Aretel in front of a vampiric statue that is bleeding. Aretel will be in despair, mourning his dead friends and then turning to you. He shares Lemay's same burning hatred for Molag Bal, and upon noticing you, he will see no difference between you and the monster, for you have been marked. There is no reasoning with him. He must be slain. Inspect his corpse, and you will discover a note which details Jacob's death, and a vigilant named Joshua who had fled, the very same vigilant whose skeletal remains we found earlier. Aretel tells of how he was the only one of them to accept the blood, and that the others were given a chance to reconsider the offer only due to the intervention of Lemay's butler, Baal. Enter into the crypt of the blood matron, and you will find Molag Baal sitting over her coffin, admiring one of his greatest victories. Nearby, you will discover Jacob's corpse, Nye. You might be wondering about what I had said earlier, that Jacob had survived. Well, he did. Sort of. In Act 1, we discover that Jacob's wife, Rahel, was the summoner who we have to stop under the beacon of Stendar. All the way back then, Jacob had a dialogue which spoke of how he was dying down in the Blood Matron's crypt until he struck a deal with Molag Baal. In exchange for his wife's soul, Jacob was able to survive this ordeal. He's not the best husband around, that's for sure. Approach the coffin with Lemay, and you will be impaled on a series of spikes, where you will awaken within Lemay's dream. She will ask you to visit the castle in which her father resides, Castle Blood Mist. Journey through the ravine, and you will eventually come to the entrance. Lemay is gone, and there is only one way out of here, forward. You will meet face to face with the father, Molag Bal who tempts you into accepting life eternal with Lemay. Accept, and you will enter into Castle Blood Mist to finally imbibe her blood and deliver you to Cold Harbor, right where Molag Bal wants you. Refuse, and you will have to battle the Blood Matron. Slay her in the dream, and you will reawaken beside her corpse, which is now desiccated and decayed. Attempt to leave the room, and it will erupt into a ring of fire, preventing any sort of escape. The curse of Molag Bal, taking the throne atop of the room, will resurrect Lemay from her grave, and you will be forced to cut her down once again. Remove the bard's dagger from her corpse, and strike down the curse before it can revive her, and finally, the curse will be over. Lemay's body is finally free to rest. You have solved the disappearances within the Windhelm prison, and you can wrap up the case by reporting your success to the steward. Lame's soul, however, is still within the grasp of the Daedric Prince. When the time comes, will you choose to save it? Thank you everyone for watching. Ilar has been a treasure once again and helped me ensure that the lore is correct, so thank you, Ilar. I would like to thank once again the Vicon Discord server for suggesting this episode. I hope it has made the lore more coherent for this act, or even shed a new light on things that perhaps you might not have known before. I wanted to dedicate this final part of this episode to an artist who's been working on pieces to do with the Vicon trilogy. 
I discovered this artist whilst looking through a vigilant tag for Skyrim on Tumblr. And her name is, her name is Lokarim. I hope I pronounced that right. She's an artist on Tumblr who has done various pieces on Vigilant, such as Molag Baal, The Bard, Laza and the Owl, and more. She is also the creator of the art that serves as my icon, the Black Owl. I, I cannot describe how much I love this piece. Um, please check her out and drop her any support that you can, whether it is a commission, a like, a reblog, anything helps. So, as always, thank you again everyone for watching. Please stay tuned for more. Goodbye.